Tranquilo tastes wonderful. Okay, um, full disclosure over here. I was actually going on a bit of a ramble in description before, then realized I wasn't uh, really filming it. I don't know uh, what happened, and I don't think I have any trace of that. Ah, shit! I haven't been recording? Yep, I do actually have a trace of it, so oh well. Whatever the case, let's welcome ourselves to another edition of the Wandering Yuki Chiefs Cafe. So just in case you uh, couldn't tell, uh, it's already uh, going to be close to Christmas time. Knowing that it's December uh, 20th as I'm recording this, well, let me put it this way. We got the snow, we got our winter wonderland, I got my Christmas tree up, I wore this snazzy little hat for uh, everyone's amusement, and that's a pretty telltale sign. And I wanted to do a little bit of a cooking uh, experiment today. I wanted to do a trout, but based on one that I've been to a restaurant, uh, no, that's not uh, grammatically correct. Based on a trout that I tried when I was at a restaurant a little while back. So if you know me, you know that whenever I'm out, I taste a brand new meal and I always ask myself, how can I make this at home? And this is kind of what I was going to be doing tonight. Naturally, I needed to get some kind of a fuel in me and I had this IP over here and I had an appropriate glass that I wanted to introduce myself to. Yeah, full disclosure also, I decided to drink also beforehand part of the ramble when I was uh, realized I forgot to record. So one thing I didn't know is like, what is the thing about this kind of glass? And turns out if you follow any craft beers, and I'm talking to, you know, craft beers, not uh, stuff like uh, the Bat Sign Comp, Coors Light, Bud Light, or whatever uh, watered down beer you're gonna be talking about. Basically, certain stouts have a type of glass, IPs have a glass, Pilsers have a glass, like there's actually an art to that. I guess it's kind of like your wine glasses where you serve your reds in one type of glass or whites in another one. Me, I'm still trying to get used to the whole process because I think, how does this taste in my mouth? What difference does it make if I put a red wine into a white wine glass? I guess I could do a video of that sometime later on. But all this to say, this is actually an IPA glass. So I've seen these countless times and yet it's only recently I discovered what it is all because of this little uh, gift over here, which I'm grateful for. Because if a cute uh, Polish lady decides to give you these kind of uh, glasses, then there's no way you can say no to it. You just show gratitude and uh, affection, of course. Mini pretty good stuff. <clears throat> and of course, I'd be rude. Wouldn't be doing it justice if I didn't uh, highlight what kind of beer I'm doing. This one's from uh, P. Brack or Pi Brack. Now, I know I drank something before from them. I think it was a rose-tinted uh, IPA that I was doing. And this one is called Tranquilo. Or should actually give us a decent description on this. Tranquilo. Persona que no siente preocupación. Or, I guess, someone who doesn't worry. Which is all well and good. If you let, uh, don't let things get to you, you're probably going to be a lot more happy in life. Just think to yourself, serenity now. Oh. But if you're following Seinfeld, then you obviously know that serenity now can lead to insanity later. One minute you're happy-go-lucky about every hardship that happens to you, and the next thing you know, you're basically destroying your apartment. Nobody needs to have that happening. But perhaps there is another Seinfeld thing that you could tie this into. Tranquilo. You're going to be saying serenity now, but then when insanity comes later, what you can do? Simple enough. Just take a whole bunch of these, you're gonna paint them silver, stack them up, glue them up, you're gonna have a giant silver pole in your living room, and then voila, you got a Festivus pole over there. So in case it's actually some people out there in this world, 
that are probably causing your grievances, making you say serenity now, invite them over to your house, and they could air, do the airing of grievances. Whether it's going to be that old family member, that distant family member who gave you a rock for Christmas, maybe it's a friend who wasn't there for you when, you're, when they needed you, or when you needed them. It could be the snow cleaner that, after you've been shoveling your driver for hours, and they just pile a bunch right in the front, just because they're natural assholes. Or, maybe it's the government, especially the government. Um, you know what, I think the more I uh, go down this rabbit hole, the more political I'm going to get. And I don't think I need to bestow that upon everyone. I just want to say, I'm going to be enjoying a good beer. Hmm. A nice, peaceful, serenity now beer. Uh, there's not going to be any uh, insanity now, people. I'm cool as a cucumber. I think. Well, everyone, that was a really nice IP that I had, but I want to get to the main course of this. Now, this kind of crust I had on my salmon when I was at the restaurant is a set uh, mushroom crusted uh, salmon. So you probably think to yourself, like, how do you put that together? To tell you the truth, even I don't know it. I might have checked one recipe or so, but truth be told, this is one that I kind of want to improvise for myself and hope that it does the best. So what I'm doing is I'm taking some white mushrooms. I'm just trying to mince this up together. I'm going to dice up into small cubes and then put it in one small bowl of beer, which what I'm going to be doing afterwards is topping it off onto my piece of trout. Yeah, I know I keep talking about salmon, <clears throat> but truth be told that trout is a lot more affordable, even if it doesn't have like, I don't know, a bit more of a fishy smell, but it's still good stuff. Some people think salmon is a uh, a bit better, but again, that's a case of your mileage uh, may vary. What you want to do, or at least what I'm hoping I can do, is dice this up into small enough pieces that once it's combined in the bowl, you can just top it off on top of the trout. And it's gonna look something like this. You just put it in the bowl once you're done. Apparently only one mushroom is needed for this because of the size, but hey, I'm more than okay with that. These I'll uh, probably eat on my own and hope that I can get an extra life or grow to be like 10 feet tall and stomp on Goombas as much as I want to. <sighs> yeah. I need some dumb video game cheese to go along with that. There, so one mushroom is down. We're gonna get to the next ingredient. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dice up some garlic. Two cloves worth. If you wanna know what kind of garlic I'm using today, I am using Quebec garlic. I bought this a little while ago, because when you go in the fall, that's actually peak season for when you get Quebec garlic. That's a little bit more, shall we say, flavorful and robust. Sometimes you pay a bit more than what you get in the grocery store for that pack of three for 99 cents, but truth be told, better flavor, and there's less chance of it going the bad and rancid on you. Usually I like to have Spanish garlic, but that's just me at times. Two cloves worth. Perfect for a Ukrainian like me. Once I'm done, I'm gonna add that into the bowl. And hope that it crusts up properly too. Oops, a little remnants here, so. There we are. And just in case you're looking at my glass before, there was a sticker on here that apparently I was supposed to remove. So that means my idiocy has been captured on camera. But, you know, because it's me and the bad jokes and stupidity is captured, here we are, everyone. I have the sticker on my hand. Why? To amuse you all, because that's what I do best. After the garlic and my mushrooms are combined, I'm gonna put in one heaping spoon of breadcrumbs. Breadcrumbs were on the salmon that I had at the restaurant, and I thought, well, 
Let's just uh, add these in and have it all bind together. Hmm. It's not binding as much as I thought it would have, so I might need to use a few extra ingredients on here. Something kind of liquidy. Okay, I'm hoping for the best on this. Taking my same spoon, I'm going to put one heaping uh, tablespoon of this olive oil. So something a bit liquidy will let it all mesh together on here and hopefully does the trick. Hmm. Oh well, if this is a failure then you'll see it caught on camera. Alright, what I did was I added about a, I'm gonna guess like a teaspoon of olive oil. Not much, but I put that on the pan here to kind of grease this up. So it acts as a lubricant for the fish. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add my fish onto the pan, just like so. And dump this in the uh, garbage too. Yeah. That's good. Unfold for maximum of spread. Okay, looking pretty good. And don't worry if it's not gonna fit because this thing is gonna shrink once it's done. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna open up a little bit of lemon juice and spread that onto the fish. Well, you might be asking like, what's the point of it? Because yeah, I did actually use this in a vlog a while back when I was doing some old salmon or trout. It's because it was a friend of mine that told me to use lemon juice on this and then spread it around, but I had yet to figure out what, it, uh, what purpose it served. But based on when I was working on my calamari a while back, in fact, you could always, uh, I don't know which direction I could look at, but look at the uh, top right corner, you could click on that video. The lemon juice, when you're working with calamari, would actually help to tenderize it. So I'm kind of thinking that with this, it would actually do the same thing if I'm uh, working with some trout or with salmon. Beautiful. Now, let's tr see how this turns out. So yeah, Oof. I'm going to crust up the trout. What a crusty, bitter old man. Hey, what am I talking about? There we are. Okay, this is actually looking pretty tasty, so I'm kind of stoked to try this out now. Yeah. I didn't look up a recipe, I'm just basically improvising whatever I can think about with this. But I'm still stoked. Mm. And of course, gotta add some seasoning. Because of all that stuff in here, I'm just gonna go for basic seasoning. Sprinkle a little salt. I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of black pepper. Nothing too crazy. And of course, the next thing I should do is preheat the oven. I'd say 400 degrees should do the justice. While the oven's preheating, I feel like doing a potato for myself. Stolen potato, the best kind of potato. I'm gonna cut these up into little quarters like this. Now time to dress it up. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay these potatoes onto a small aluminum pan here, just like that. And I'm gonna poke some holes in this, just a handful, not too much. Okay, this is kind of an awkward angle, but that uh, comes with the territory when you're a South guy like me. I mean, I could do this right-handed, but it wouldn't do it justice. See there, a couple holes poked. Drench a bit of olive oil in it, and then give it a perfect massage so it maximizes the uh, penetration into the holes. Oh wait, that sounds kind of dirty, doesn't it? Never mind. There, oil up your potatoes. There. And now you can do your seasoning. Let's take some plain salt, a little bit of pepper. Now for the next one, let's do ah, basil. You can't go wrong with basil on potatoes. Oregano. Once again, you can't go wrong with that. And if you want to do Greek style potatoes, you kind of need to have oregano in your arsenal. Because if it ain't got oregano, it ain't Greek. Now, some thyme. And anyone who does the uh, Super Mario Brothers timeout music is going to get punched. Massage it together, season it up. Then you just play the waiting game until the oven is preheated to 400 degrees. We're going to be getting close to 400 degrees now, and I'm going to be putting my salmon 
Actually, no, I'm going to be putting my potatoes in first because that's going to take the most amount of time. I'm going to set the timer to... There we are, right on cue. So I'm going to set this timer to... 30 minutes. And then once I get to the 20-minute mark, that's when I'm going to be adding my salmon, uh, no, my trout, into the oven. You're going to take note, too, that I added some extra mushrooms in here. Those are two extra mushrooms from when I was creating the crust. And quite frankly, I didn't want to put them back into the fridge. So I just sliced them up, added a little bit of a seasoning to it, and then I'm going to throw it in. Then that should all be good to go to cook. Of course, it might be time for another beverage because I am out of my IP. So what I'm going to be doing is not going to be a musical cue for it, but I'm doing something that's going to be at the SAQ. Trooper British Red Ale. Beautiful stuff. And obviously, if you're a fan of Iron Maiden, you probably already know this one by now. I'm not going to do a musical cue because I don't want my video to be blocked on YouTube. I don't need that kind of a ordeal here. And yeah. Technically, this is an IPA class, but whatever. I'm just going to enjoy it in here anyways because I don't want to dirty another glass just for the sake of it. Because if you had to get a glass for every type of beer you're drinking, you'd be doing a lot of dishes in your life and you wouldn't want to do that. So, a British Red. Let's see uh, what this taste is like. Pretty good. Has a bit of a taste of caramelized malts, which is typical of some ambers. But overall, satisfactory and not too, too sweet. Just the way I like it. Okay, 23 minutes. Yeah, that's practically 20 minutes to go. Get this in the oven. Let it all bake up. Beautiful. Well, well, yeah, you didn't see me pull out of the oven, but rest assured, this thing actually looks pretty delicious. My mushrooms over here look like they came out really uh, dried out, crispy, oiled up, and almost like they're baked to the grill. Uh, brim. I don't know what a grill is. Potatoes, quite awesome. But the piece de resistance is going to be my salmon with this mushroom breading crust over here. So I'm going to give this thing a good taste test to see how it turned out. Yep, quite nice. The mushrooms have baked in just the right amount. The breadcrumbs, the oil, and also the uh, garlic gave it a good bonding and a good flavoring too, so can't complain about that. And rest assured, in case you want to know if I have any other vitamins to go with it, I got me a green salad to go with it in a sesame dressing to change things up a bit. Pretty satisfying, super delicious, and overall, just what I need on a nice, cold day outside. The potatoes are cooked just as well too, so can't complain either. Yep, in addition to the beer, I do need water for hydration and lemon water for maximum efficiency. So everyone, thanks for watching this edition of the Warm Yuki Cheese Cafe. So if you like what you see, yep, right on cue. Just hit that subscribe button below and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy my antics. And leave a comment or a suggestion if ever you have anything you want to share. Above all else, keep spreading the cheese, everyone. So thanks again. Mm. This mushroom is tasty, but I don't have the urge to stomp on Goombas. What am I going to do now, people?